Hi, I'm Catherine O'Regan, Executive Director of the Cities Leadership Institute. Here at the Institute, we're focused on making great cities, towns and communities. One way we build the capacity of urban leaders is through our International Visiting Experts Program. As part of this program, I'm delighted to bring you economist, lawyer, entrepreneur and author Michael Schumann. Michael's a global expert on local community economics and he provides great valuable insights and case studies in making diverse, self-reliant local economies. Enjoy. Well, local ownership comes with a lot of benefits, but the biggest one is that local businesses stick around. So what you invest in local businesses becomes a permanent long-term asset for your community. And what you see is that money spent in local businesses is much more likely to be re-spent within the community. And I should add that we've got some wonderful studies in the United States that have shown that in communities with high densities of locally owned businesses, there are the highest per capita job growth rates and also the highest per capita income growth rates. Zingerman's was a deli that was established in the college town of Ann Arbor, Michigan in 1980. They knew that they needed to keep growing and get more ambitious or they were going to lose their best managers. The problem was, do they become a chain delicatessen? And they decided against it for two reasons. One is they feared they might lose some quality control. And second, as the founder, Paul Saginaw, says, the last thing he wanted to do in his declining years was to spend all of his time on airplanes looking at second-rate versions of himself. He really wanted to stick around in Ann Arbor and stay connected with the community. So they made the decision, rather than grow broad across the country, they would grow deep in Ann Arbor and continue to focus on the localness, the local connectedness of the business. As you diversify the economy, a number of interesting things happen. You grow jobs, you grow income, you then grow skills, and in a way you're growing the capacity to then be responsive to changes in technology and changes in, in the economy. And, and what I think you can say is that the strongest economies are as self-reliant as possible, so that is as diverse as possible, but then from that position of diversity they are exporting as much as possible. But the mistake that economists make now is they assume that every community should be really good at one or two things, and that's all they should do. This leaves every community economy very vulnerable and poor. But if we all really aim to build up business so that we are, say, 75 or 80% self-reliant, and I think that's no problem to achieve, then out of the rest, you focus on kind of your global competitive advantages. So you can get the best of both worlds. If you do not have a clear plan yet about how you are going to nurture locally owned businesses, start with money. Now historically, that's been really difficult to do because securities laws, really, you could say it were a form of investment apartheid. They made it really easy for the top 1% to put money into anything, anytime, no questions asked. That is now changing. It's been changing in the United States. It's changing in Australia. Frankly, it's changing in almost every country in the world. We can put that money into local businesses we know and love. And guess what? You can get a pretty good private rate of return doing that, but you also get a community rate of return, because you know that that investment is creating jobs, raising your tax base, paying for the schools and the police. So the changes in laws that are happening in Australia and in the United States, facilitating crowdfunding and other forms of local investment, are a real game changer. 